On a day where legislators elected on a ZANU PF ticket sought to outdo each other in glitz and glamour, the main opposition Triple C flexed its muscle in a symbolic protest by snubbing President Emerson Mnangagwa's State of the Nation address. The legislators from the Nelson Chamisa led party just did not set foot in parliament on grounds that they did not recognize Mnangagwa's presidency. Members of the Triple C were not in attendance. In terms of our standing orders in the National Assembly, standing order number 89, we pray together. So, standing order number 88, we pray together. In standing order number 114 of the National Assembly and standing order number 89. We read together in standing order number 114 of the Senate standing orders. <coughs> it is therefore clear that. There has been some violation of those standing orders. Members of the TNC have come to arrive after Adam was summoned by His Excellency the President and they have stayed in hotels and they have been given and facilitated their traffic to arrive. Now, according therefore, the violation of these standing orders, and in terms of the powers vested in me as speaker, under order, standing order number 15, I instruct the third part to ensure that first the triple C members will not receive their coupons to go back. In response, Speaker of the House of Assembly Jacob Mudenda hit the legislators in the pocket, announcing he will not be paying the legislators. Style and fashion were the highlights of the day as legislators came in with top-of-the-range sedans, trending cell phones, trendy apparel and accessories which served as nothing more than just the yearning abyss between Munangagwa's ministers and the ordinary who struggle daily to put food on the table. Ministers slid into the imposing parliament building with their cars while legislators were dropped off by parliament buses. In the fullness of the British tradition associated with the official opening of parliament and the sauna, President Munangagwa arrived in style, wielding symbols of power, a display of extravagance and state authority. He rode in a vintage Rolls Royce, flanked either side by horses dressed for the occasion. He walked in with service chiefs in their gear and tools of authority, as if to show the Triple C that even as they stayed away, he together with the army and police were in charge. Munangagwa's two vice presidents, 
Constantino Chiwenga and Kembo Mohadi brought their A game to the opening event. The ZANU PF legislators had nothing but praise for their leader's speech and direction in which he seeks to take government. They shared their views. Uh, I think it was very good and very comprehensive. It covers it covered all the uh, ministries and all the um, concerns of our nation. But also I want to focus on the uh, youth and the, the drug and substance um, abuse. I think last week we talked about it, that we need as adults to be responsible and make sure that we don't sell these uh, uh, alcohol drinks and, and substances. Let's not make them easily accessible to young people. I think we are destroying our own nation. It was very interesting that the president would want to see um, Zimbabweans um, have enough food. Food security was his core issue. He said the Zimbabwe was um, moving from one level to the other in the agricultural sector, and that the wheat production has, has gone up, that maize production has gone up, which shows that um, those are two major issues they talked about, that we are going to have enough food. Because if a nation has enough food, that means they are going to be strong, they are going to be more productive. And that's one thing we talked about very earnestly. And then that our youth, our young women, which is what we fought for, are going to have so many in education, so much in the sporting area, so much in industry, and so much right um, in terms of uh, the upbringing in education. The ed education stru structure has changed so much to be more productive than academic, so that you use, right, they use their hands. Using their hands is what he, the trust um, he, he came up with. We also talked about women, that right, they're going to be funds for women. The women they are being a, um, our mothers and our young children, they're going to have skills, more skills to, to young women, not just ordinary skills, but also skills which are in the mining sector, in the agricultural sector, and in the IT sector for young people as, as they grow, which is also very exciting. And uh, by and large, in the, the War Veterans Bill that is coming up, uh, will also benefit us as uh, war veterans as we fade away from, from this earth. Because in this watch of Tassara, and this watch of Tassara, I was very, very happy. The boycott is insignificant. As we are saying, we are very happy. The boycott is insignificant. As you also, the president came, he gave his State of the Nation address, and uh, the train is now moving. All the processes that are needed are now in place. He, he laid the groundwork, the legislative agenda has been laid, and it's up to them to join the train or else they'll be left behind. And we have laws that deal with them if they continue boycotting. If they continue boycotting, they'll cease to be honorable members. So it's up to them. The elections are done and dusted. Uh, they were sworn in, which means it was an admission that the process was correct. So we are not aware why they didn't turn up today, but the speaker has pronounced very clearly that they are not going to receive any coupons uh, if they stayed in hotels. Uh, that money will be deducted from them. So we, we, we feel that it's not significant. Uh, we are now moving forward with the setting up with the relevant committees and parliament business is starting in earnest. This was very straightforward. Uh, after the victory, uh, His Excellency emphasized the importance of uh, parliament, that this should be an institution which, where democracy should actually be promoted. A peaceful one where ideas are, are put together and so much that the importance of being an MP is to make sure you carry out the three mandates. One is that of representing your people who elected you to parliament. And the second one is oversight. And the third one, which is very important, is making sure that all members of parliament read and understand the laws which they put into place. Because we want laws which are democratic, we want laws which will make this country develop and transform into a big economy. So we have been told as members of parliament the importance of working together in a peaceful manner and also making sure that we always have our eyeball on changing the lives of the people of this country. So a lot more has to be done 
We are very grateful to have a president who is driving this country towards Vision 2030. And this is what the members of parliament should be working together. It doesn't matter which political party you are coming from. But once you have been elected by the people, you are answerable to the people. The people has put their trust in you. So you need to come into this parliament, debate policies and laws which will make Zimbabwe a great country. The president laid out the legislative, legislative agenda of the parliament, uh, which is firmly rooted upon building upon what he achieved in his first term as the president of the republic. Zimbabwe is you know, on a development trajectory. Nothing is going to stop Zimbabwe from making rapid progress. We are already the fastest regional economy. We will be very soon Africa's fastest growing economy. All around in mining, in agriculture, the, the engine is pumping uh, at full throttle. And the president is building upon those successes in his, in his second term. Um, it, was, it was to the point. Real issues that we should deal with as parliament came out. We now know what we are supposed to do as parliament, as members of parliament, as, as, as our legislative agenda. We will pursue those to ensure that we deal with the issues that we are expected of as members of parliament. That is our oversight, our representation, everything came out from the president's speech and we are ready to de deliver as parliament. In response to the boycott on their leader, ZANU-PF legislators felt it was a non-event, an abuse of voters and a deed deserving punishment. As you know, there is a political finances act for members, for parties who are in parliament. Now if you are not attending parliament, that is what the speaker said, can we look at it with a view of ensuring that uh, if there are no provisions to sanction them, we tighten up the legislation. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to you, who you, who you you're asking me? If somebody has been elected by the people to go to parliament and then they don't attend the first session of the 10th parliament, I, I don't know what it means to you. But uh, the people of Zimbabwe, are, they are there, they will see. They have entrusted these individuals to come and represent them and to come and hear what the president is uh, chatting the way forward and which are the bills and acts which the parliament should discuss all about. I don't know, I don't have to say it, you tell me. I think that was unfortunate. We really cannot do that because the president of Zimbabwe is the president of everybody. And when our president said, no one and no place should be left behind, we need to take him seriously. Because really, it doesn't discriminate. You can imagine what the First Lady has done. You can imagine what His Excellency has done. He has tried to reach out. And some of these uh, Triple C MPs, they come from Binga. You can imagine what he, His Excellency has done in that uh, district. And yet they still uh, don't come to Parliament, they still boycott him. I think that's ungrateful, that's unfair. I think we must have the spirit of unity, the spirit of coming together, the spirit of building our nation together. Politics ended when we were campaigning. Now it's time we united to build Zimbabwe together. It was most unfortunate that they decided to boycott this uh, this session, your president, because the president is there to stay, and parliament is there to stay, and the sources and we have nothing to lose by their being absent. And the, but they've got people out there who voted them into parliament who did not see them here. It's up to the people of Zimbabwe to judge what sort of people they are, because this this is most unfortunate, and they, this is an issue that they should regret for the rest of their lives. I don't think it was it's necessary and it was called for. Uh, we know them as hypocrites. They are just like that. You, they don't know that for us to be legislature, we need the president. We can debate anything in this house. We can propose any law, but without the signature of the president, we won't have a law. So they will be debating, they will be following up on any issues that are related to our agenda as legislature. Without the president, we won't do anything. So these are hypocrites because they are coming back to parliament 
as we go to debate issues that were raised by the same president. So they are not honest people, and we, we, we believe the people of Zimbabwe will read who they are, the real hypocrites of our political space. Parliament, where ZANU-PF has a majority, will shape the legislative agenda for Zimbabwe in the next coming five years. It will be instrumental in how the next elections will be held and the environment that will happen. Many expect the opposition to push electoral reforms and win some changes on the low side of things, but this is not likely to happen. However, ZANU-PF is unlikely to be able to push laws which will see constitutional changes because it lacks a two-thirds majority. The games begin in earnest as the five-year countdown starts now. Gaddafi Wells, HSTV News, Mount Abden.